Hi. Okay, what I want to do in this video is explain how the nephron of the kidney creates uh, a concentrated fluid at the bottom of the loop of Henle, also called the nephron loop. In the following video, I'll explain how that allows for a concentrated urine. First, we have to understand how the loop of Henle works. You may have heard these terms, single effect and countercurrent multiplier. What does that mean? So the first thing to do is to make sure you understand the basic anatomy of the nephron. All right, so this is the functional unit of the kidney. You have about a million of them. Each one is receiving some um, filtrate, that is some blood without the blood cells and the big proteins, um, into its, its tubule, okay? And that occurs at the glomerulus. You have fluid at high pressure that's essentially pushed through these podocyte cells into this tube, okay? Now, the way you want to think of the nephron is having two functional parts. The left half on this picture, or the first half as the fluid flows, is completely unregulated. So this proximal tubule, which is the first place the fluid gets, and then the loop of Henle are never affected by what your blood pressure is, by how much salt's in your blood, by how dehydrated you are. The same thing happens in them all the time. And students often get confused about this and think that the loop of Henle only makes fluid concentrated when we need it to. No. Everything always the same on this part of the kidney. Dehydration, salt concentrations, blood pressure, all that stuff uh, uh, affect this uh, distal half of the kidney, the distal tubule and the collecting duct, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so here's the loop of Henle, um, and it, the anatomy of it, the fact that it's not straight but dives down and then comes back up is what allows it to do the thing that it needs to do. So the fact that it's shaped like that um, is a really big deal. Now, in the proximal tubule, what happens? All the organic molecules that, you, that your body wants are reabsorbed, glucose, amino acids, and water and salt are reabsorbed proportionately. About 60% of the water and salts, water and ions, that enter the, the uh, nephron are reabsorbed in the proximal tube. So at the end of the proximal tube, we have the same osmolarity, the same concentration that we had in the beginning, which is about 300, which is the same as your blood, the same as the blood of the animal. Um, whatever animal it is. Okay, so the fluid is about 300 milliosmolar, right? And then it goes down. This thing is called the descending limb, and then this part's called the ascending limb because it's going back up toward the distal tubule. Of course, the fluid flows first through the descending limb and then through the ascending limb, but in terms of the causality of what's happening in the loop of Henle, or nephron loop if you want to call it that, you want to start here in the ascending limb. What's happening in the ascending limb? The ascending limb is really special. It pumps out salt. That's not really super special. There are lots of tissues in your body that, that do that. But it pumps out salt, and normally we always think of water following salt, right? That's what happens in the proximal tubule and, again, in lots of other places in your body. But here, the water can't follow. See here, it says no water. And that's because the cell membranes of these cells that form the tubule have a lot of cholesterol in them and some other modifications that makes them essentially impermeable to water. So in the same way that lipids on your skin prevent water from constantly seeping out of you into the universe, the high lipid content here prevents water from following salt out. So ions go out, but not salt. Now, remember this tube, even though it's a two-dimensional picture, it's a three-dimensional tube. So salts are coming out all sides of that three-dimensional tube, including sort of into this space between the ascending limb and the descending limb. And this space then becomes salty, right? Becomes high osmolality relatively because there's ions appearing there, but no water. So as the ions accumulate here, this fluid's coming down the descending limb, right? Well, that limb is permeable to water. So as that fluid comes down, the water is now, the, um, the fluid is passing by this salty place this, that is created by these ions being pumped out without water following. And so water then, following just um, standard osmosis, osmosis will, will suck water out of the descending limb and into the space. So see here it says only water um, is reabsorbed. And actually the water that comes out there, it doesn't just stay in the interstitial fluid, but it gets reabsorbed um, 
into the uh, vasa recta and these paratubial capillaries that are surrounding um, the nephron loop. So we don't show these in the picture because it would make it too messy, but there are all these capillaries that are around um, the loop of Henle, and they reabsorb the water. That'll be important um, in a minute. So the they're reabsorbing the water. So the fluid, meanwhile, in the tubule itself is becoming saltier, right? Because the, the, the fluid is being, uh, uh, having the water sucked out of it by these um, salts. And then when it gets to this side, those salts are pumped out, and so we again have a pretty dilute um, filtrate after the loop of Henle. But what's happening in the loop of Henle is the fact that ions are being pumped out here and water's being pumped out on the other side results in a concentrated fluid at the bottom of the loop of Henle. That is what is sometimes called the single effect, meaning the simple explanation for how the fluid initially becomes concentrated. However, the single effect itself actually couldn't make the bottom of the loop of Henle 1200. And that's why people are always going on about the countercurrent multiplier of the loop of Henle. But they always make it sound really complicated, and it's actually not that hard. But let, me, let me explain, okay? So the fluid's coming down here, right? And the water gets sucked out of it, osmotically, as we just said. So it becomes concentrated here. And as a concentrated fluid comes up here, imagine your sodium potassium pump here, the more concentrated the fluid that's there, the more likely it is at any given moment that one of those sodium ions is going to run into one of those pumps that's sucking them out just stochastically, right? Just, it's just more likely for those pumps to be able to um, attach to a new sodium molecule and pump it out. So the saltier this fluid is that's being delivered to the ascending limb, the faster ions are going to be pumped out because they're going to run into those uh, molecules more commonly. So the saltier the fluid that comes, the more ions get pumped out. The more ions get pumped out, the saltier this interstitial fluid is. The saltier the interstitial fluid is, the more water is going to be pulled out osmotically. The more water that's pulled out osmotically, the saltier the fluid that's delivered to the ascending limb is. The saltier the fluid in the ascending limb, the more salt gets pumped out per unit time, and so on. So it's a positive feedback loop, and it multiplies itself, and it only can do that because these two fluids are flowing in opposite directions, counter current, counter current, and multiplier because it's a positive feedback loop. That's all that it is. That's the entire um, functional explanation of that multiplier. And so the effect is that the concentration at the bottom of the loop of Henle, the osmolarity at the bottom of, of the loop of Henle, is limited only by the rate at which these pumps can pump out sodium. And so in some animals, they have loads of pumps in a longer loop of Henle, and this fluid is more concentrated than uh, 1,200. In the Australian hopping mouse, it's 7,200 milliosmolar. Wow. In you, relatively modest 1,200, it's still four times as concentrated as your blood. Pretty good. Okay, so that's how the loop of Henle forms a concentrated fluid here. The other thing to keep in mind, the last thing, is that it's not just concentrated here, but concentrated in the interstitial fluid surrounding it because those ions get pumped out and they stay there, some of them, but the water is being reabsorbed into those capillaries around it. So we have not only created a concentrated fluid in loop of Henle, but also around it. To see why that matters, watch the next video about concentrating urine.